Following on from last week's episode, where we saw that McAdoo took Colin's phone, saw a photo on there and started acting off with him, this week's episode, episode 9, saw that art get picked up, and we witnessed it progress to a boiling point where it all kicked off in the changing room and also on the pitch. With an episode that was less focused on Ted, but slightly more on the team and also Roy and the way that he is within, let's recap, break down and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Ted Lasso Season 3 Episode 9 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode felt extremely contained when compared to the rest of the ones that we've had this season. Like the first couple, this one was centered around a few days, and most of it was on the training ground or on the pitch. With AFC Richmond performing well following their tactical change midway through the season to total football, it was something that had put them on an eight-game winning streak, although they were 1-0 down at half-time to Brighton in the game that we were watching unfold. This was where we saw the eruption take place between McAdoo and the fan. All throughout training, in the pre-match and during the game, we saw that Isaac was treating Colin extremely badly, almost to the point where it made you feel as though he was homophobic due to only acting like that towards Colin since he found out that he was gay. However, it turned out that wasn't the case. With the fan chanting out a homophobic slur, McAdoo went into the crowd and squared up to him, which ultimately meant that he got a red card. Isaac did this because he knew how it was out of line for them to shout that and was essentially doing it to stand up for Colin. It was here where we saw that with Isaac storming off and going into the other room, Colin built up the courage and came out to the rest of his teammates. A moment which went the best it could have possibly gone for the character, with all of them showing solidarity and standing by him. This ultimately allowed them to go back onto the pitch and win the game 2-1, with Colin getting two assists. The commentator mentioned how it was like Colin had been reborn, and that sentence ran true for how he most probably felt when in front of all of his teammates. Right at the end of the episode, we saw Isaac go to Colin's house and apologize for the way that he acted, and it turned out that it was only because Isaac was hurt over the fact that Colin felt as though he wasn't able to tell him, and was worried that he thought that he wouldn't be supportive of him. But we saw the both of them squash the beef, make up, and in the background, a song with the lyrics, I am what I am, was playing. A song which rounded off the episode in a perfect way, with Colin being accepted by his teammates for who he was, and it also running true for the way that Roy was looking at himself, and the way Nate was choosing Jade over Rupert. Let's break the rest of the video down by the main characters. Nate. Nate had a real strong involvement in this episode, and it was an involvement that certainly painted the mood and tone for the character for the remainder of the season. We saw that he was still a fantastic coach, and there was nothing that was getting in the way of that, not even his newfound relationship with Jade, something which I thought had the potential to. But this episode was important for Nate because I feel it continued the turning point in the character. We saw Nate see Rupert for who he truly was, and he walked away. The first time that he'd done that all season. Before, he'd go along with it and would spend the entirety of his time feeling uncomfortable, but he didn't do that this time around. It all started when Rupert met Jade in his office and didn't provide the warmest of welcomes. Inside, Nate doesn't like Rupert that much and most certainly doesn't agree with the way that he acts. And I feel he knows that Rupert doesn't really care about him that much. He's only good with him due to the fact that he's winning. We're yet to see Nate be in a position where Rupert unleashes his wrath onto him. And I imagine if Nate slips up, then we will see that. And if that does happen, I feel that could be the end of Nate at West Ham. I think he'd walk away. The end with Nate being in the bar with Rupert for a guy's night, but Rupert bringing along two women was the end of the respect that I feel Nate's going to show Rupert. With Rupert not even looking phased at the fact that Nate said that he was leaving, I think we're going to see Nate pulling away from Rupert now, and most likely gravitating back towards Ted, the person that he used to look up to and was a much better mentor than Rupert. Nate is clearly still following AFC Richmond, as we saw that he was reading an article on the fact that Isaac went into the crowd and got into a confrontation with a fan, so it shows us that he is still interested. I just hope it happens soon. Roy. This was a good episode for Roy. Roy is often the closed off, hard, spiky-shelled individual that doesn't let anybody inside, nor does he really confide in anybody. However, at the start of the episode, where we saw that he was being nice at the training ground, little did we know that we'd see him undergo the development that he did in this episode. He was asked to do a press conference, which was something that he didn't want to do, and it was what ultimately caused him to have his conversation with Rebecca, which opened him up. 
He said that he just wanted to be left alone in life, and Rebecca called Bluff and asked him if he's always just going to run away from everything in life and act as if he's been dealt a bad hand. This was what ultimately caused a slight change in character, as he knew that the way that he acted wasn't a way that he could continue to. This then allowed us to see him take on the press conference right at the end of the episode, where we saw that he stood by Isaac when asked a question about it and related it back to himself, highlighting how every single person has troubles that they're going through and others may not know about it. He showed real leadership qualities when in the press conference, and despite still adding a sprinkle of Roy Kent harshness to the interview, it showed that he was no longer running away from things in his life. I do wonder if that means that in the next episode or by the end of the season we may see him address Keeley for the first time in a long while, and maybe mention how he has feelings for her still and that he regrets breaking up, as after all, that was something that he did run away from. With Keeley now also being single too, this could very much open up the possibility. Ted Ted didn't have that much involvement in this episode, other than the fact that we saw that he was doing a co-parenting session with Michelle, and we also saw that he gave a speech in the dressing room, a classic lasso speech that pulls on the heartstrings. He mentioned how everybody doesn't not care about Colin being gay, and that they're there for him and are in support of him. I expected nothing less from Ted to be fair. You always expect him to do right and stand by somebody when they need him. With there not being a focus on how he was feeling about Henry and Michelle in this week's episode, I do wonder if what we saw in last week's episode of him looking like he had less worry was now something that was going to be present. I guess we'll see next week. Overall review I thought this was a good episode. It was one that felt like there was a lot of emotional weight behind it. With it being focused around Colin coming out, the rebirth of Roy, and Nate taking a deeper look at his morals too, I'm not surprised that it felt like that. It was the shortest one that we'd had in a good few weeks, which I didn't mind, because I feel as though it said everything that it needed to and didn't draw anything out too long. With Colin coming out, I believe this is the beginning of the end. The first underlying subplot of the season has been wrapped up, and I think we're heading downwards now, which is sad to say, as I really don't want the show to end. With only a couple of episodes left, we've got to see Nate pick up with Ted soon, right? The next episode is focused around the international break, so both managers are going to have a bit of time on their hands. Maybe that's when it will happen. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So, there you have it. Ted Lasso Season 3 Episode 9 Ending Explained If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the I button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.